everybody. Okay, this video is about voltage dividers. So the application is basically you have some voltage source here. And if you set up a bunch of resistors in series, however many, right, then the concept is this current, right, whatever current's coming out of here, because all these resistors are in series, it's all the same current, right? So all three, if you have 10 of them, however many, they all have the same current, but they would each have a different voltage, right? Because the resistances are different. So let's say we label each, and again, you can label however you want, right? Like I'll say, I'll call this V1. I'll call this V2. I'll call this V3. Right, so the way I drew my coordinates, right, this is V equals positive IR. Right, the way I drew this, the voltage drop is going down, the current is going down, so then it's kind of in the same direction, right? Same here, I drew them all kind of going in the same direction. Right, the current's all the same, but the resistances could be different, and so therefore the voltages will be different. Right, and then the result is we're dividing this into smaller chunks, right? Because if you go KVL, and let's say we go around this way, KVL, then Right, going this way, that's negative Vs plus, and then if we're going this way, that's positive, 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 right? Equals zero. And then, right, just if you move this on the other side, right, so we basically split up that source voltage into smaller chunks. Okay, now what are the voltages? So do we know, can we get an expression for the current? So we know that the equivalent resistance of these in series, right, looks like some equivalent resistance is going to just be R1 plus R2 plus R3, right? Because they're in series. I'll just make more space over here. Okay. And then we know the current is V over our equivalent, right, which is all this. So now you take this back into these, right? So then we'll know the voltage for each. I'll label these as equation one, two, three, four. Right, so if you substitute this back into here, then you have V1 equals I R1. So then that's V S R1 over R equivalent. Right, etc. V2 is put that there here, right? S R two over R equivalent, etc. Right? Okay, so let me just summary right? for a voltage divider, however many.
let's say this is R1, R2, etc., however many, then this voltage here is Vs times R1 over R equivalent. Right, so it could just be generically for for just whichever resistor I and I can be right and then our equivalent is just in series however many right if you have n of them right so this is the voltage divider equation and then this is the equivalent resistance, which is in series. Okay. So let's try with some numbers. So let's say you have a, a five volt supply and I put a 100 ohm resistor here and another 100 ohm resistor here. Okay, so how much voltage here and here? Two and a half volts and two and a half volts, right? Because let's say we call this, I'll call this V1, I'll call this V2, right? So V1 is source voltage and then R1 over both in series. Right, and this is 5 volts. Right, so 2.5 volts. And then this would also be 2.5 volts. Right, so I took 5 volts and I split it into 2.5 here, 2.5 here. And then when you're analyzing a voltage divider, you should keep going, like how much power per resistor. So then for, let's say, for resistor one, you can either go I squared R or V squared over R or V times I. Like which of these, they're all the same, but I'm already given information, like I know the resistor, so then, right, I, I could use one of these. So I just need to know the current or the voltage. Right, so I already calculated the voltage here. So then maybe this one, right? So it's 2.5 volts squared over 100. Okay, and then which is 0625. So that's, uh, you can just say it's 62.5 milliwatts and then you have to check like what is the rating of my resistor is it a quarter watt resistor is it an eighth watt resistor and then you determine is the resistor gonna burn and then do the same for the other right this in this example it'll be the same okay now, one more example. Let's say the other way around. Let's say you have a, so let's say 10 volts, but I want, it's, let's say two volts over here and eight volts over here. What resistors do you pick to achieve that voltage division? Right, the previous example, we were given the resistors find the voltage, this time, let's say, we want these voltages, how do you get solve for the resistances? So you can just, right, same source, R1 over R1 plus R2, write these in series, V2, and then you basically go through, what do you know and what do you not know? what is known and what is unknown, right? So we're, we know the source voltage, this. We know these voltages here. So the only unknowns are these two resistances, right? 
So it's two equations, two unknowns, which you can solve, right? So then it just becomes a math problem, two equations, two unknowns. How do you solve it? And the truth is, for this example, there are infinite combinations of R1 and R2 that you can use, right? For, let's see, for example, like I can say, you pick like R1 is 2 ohms, R2 is 8 ohms, right? And then you, if you plug these in here, right, then that's 2 over 2 plus 8 times 10 is 2 volts, right? 8 over 2 plus 8 times 10, oh, there shouldn't be an equals, sorry. There's no equals here, right? Then 8 volts. Like this is one of infinite choices, or you can say R1 is 200 ohms, R2 is 800 ohms, or you can say R1 is 2 kilo ohms, R2 is 8 kilo ohms. So which of the infinite choices do you pick? So in reality, what happens when you pick values like this is the current is going to be high. Right, because the current here, I, is over R, the equivalent resistance, which is both together. Right, so if this number is small, like this, right, the denominator is small, then this will be large. But then if you pick, let's say, larger values like this, Right, then the denominator will be large and the current will be small. So it depends what you're trying to accomplish with the circuit. Do you want to like maximize the amount of current traveling here or minimal? And then the last thing is you have to compute the power for each resistor to make sure they don't burn, right? So like if you have quarter watt resistors, you have to make sure that you don't exceed that power rating per resistor. So then that's really engineering design, right? Of the infinite choices, which of the infinite choices do you pick? Okay, so thanks for listening here. I'll see you on the next video.